Hello, thank you for tuning in to the Beacon Weekly 5, 5 things you need to know about marketing this week. My name is Roger Gallegos, I'm the founder and CEO of Beacon Marketing. This week I'm going to be discussing how you could position yourself and your business to be a resource through your marketing efforts. This is an important concept to understand because many people mistakenly think that the purpose of marketing their business is to make sales. When in actuality, the sales is a natural byproduct. If you do everything else right, the sales will come naturally. Because the truth of the matter is, your audience is buying, but they don't want to be sold. They don't want to be strictly just, hey, buy this, buy this, buy this. You may make some initial sales, and you may get them to do it, but you're not going to build trust. You're not going to build loyalty. You're not going to build those repeat clients because they're just going to go real quick and be gone. You're not going to develop that loyalty. Whereas if you... Be that resource, you build that trust, you build that loyalty, you develop a relationship, they get to know, love, and trust your business, and they keep coming back, and they start referring, and that's where the real gold is. And then so the ironic thing is when you don't act as a salesperson, the sales actually come easier, and they're longer lasting because you get the people coming back and referring to others. So you see a lot more better effects of that. So the key to actually marketing your business successfully is not to try to make the sale, but is to actually be a resource. So how is it that you can be that resource? Well, let's jump into that and let's see how that works out. So the first thing you need to do is listen to your audience. Listen to what they're saying engage with them, maybe conduct some surveys, see what they're, look at your data, see what they're doing in terms of when they visit your website. Um, Maybe if you have any complaints or comments, look at what they're saying and adapt your messaging and adapt even your services or the things that you provide. Like an easy example is if you're seeing people say, hey, you know, if you're a restaurant, say, hey, when we order takeout, we don't get enough napkins, put a little extra napkins in there. Or if you um, see that people, uh, are not happy with the response from your website into when, when submitting uh, questions, maybe you put a chat bot that answers their questions more immediately. You are listening to their, 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 their issues and solving their problems right there. That makes you more attractive. You all of a sudden become a resource. So that's a great way. So number one, listen to the audience. Number two, and this is a byproduct of that, uh, that first one is anticipate their needs. So this is very much similar to that chatbot idea that I told you about. If you see that people, you know, uh, want quicker responses, maybe you do some chatbots and on your website and you do things that help them address their issues. So it does t- it does two things for you. It helps you address the question right there. It gives you an opportunity to maybe sell them at that moment, even though uh, because here's the thing. I know I contradicted myself by saying you don't want to be a sales mode. But in this situation, if you're addressing a problem and you have a good solution, you provided it, maybe that's your way in to say, hey, while you're here, why don't you make this purchase? That's a little more of a natural uh, segue into that sales process. The other thing you're doing is you're lowering your support costs because then you don't have to go back and adjust that question uh uh, you know, either through yourself or through one of your employees at a later date, you're addressing it right there and again, possibly making a sale. So that first thing that the first thing you want to do is listen to your to your audience. Second, begin anticipating their needs by looking at their common questions, by looking at the common issues and see what things that you could do to help resolve those issues in the moment so that when they come to you, they get the answer quickly, they get what they need, and they're on their way. And even if they don't make a purchase because you are listening to their needs and you're be, or listening to their, their questions or their problems and begin to anticipate their needs, you are solving them in that moment. Next, and then again, this is sort of like a continuation of that, is be ready to engage. One of the most frustrating things that happens, you know, as a, as a consumer is when you have a question, and even if you're close to buying, or especially if you're close to buying, you're saying, hey, I have a question. No one gets back to you. You're like, hey, I have money ready to go. I just have one question. And if someone doesn't answer you, you're, you're most likely going to move on. The same thing happens with your audience. If they are, if they have a question and they're engaging you, chances are they're close to buying or they may, they may just need a little bit of a nudge. So if they're there, be ready to engage, prepare yourself either through a chatbot, either through live support or something, you know, whatever it is, 
be ready to engage, be ready to address the problem. You work so hard to get that lead, you want to make sure you capitalize on it. Number four, and this is, goes to the theme of this, always put that sale second. Always work to solve their problem first, and then if the situation presents itself, then offer that sale. Because and and here's why I address that separately, and why I really want to make this a separate point in this discussion. Because if you if they come to you with a problem, and the first thing you do is offer a sale, then they're not going to take you seriously. Whereas if you go through and you try to dig deeper into their problem and really try to get to the root of it, you may actually come up with a different solution or a different product or service that may help them, even if it's something that you guys don't provide, and I'll get to that in one second, that really solves their issue. So instead of just selling them on something that they may not need or use or really help the problem, you are actually getting down to the root of their issue. So at the end of it, they felt that they were really listened to, they felt that they were taken care of, and your you and your business looks that much better. Even if you didn't make the sale, you probably just earned an advocate. And again, I, t I would venture to say that one advocate for your business is better than one sale. Because that one sale is just worth whatever that one sale is, whatever that profit margin is, it's just worth that. But if you have that advocate, that's worth its weight in gold because then that person is out there telling their friends, their family, and anybody that will listen, hey, I went to Beacon Marketing, they answered all my questions, I didn't go with them, but because they told me what I needed, I realized that I just needed a new website built or I needed this, and even though they didn't provide all the services I needed, they told me where to go. It was a great experience. I highly recommend it for anybody who's doing that. I would much rather have that than sell someone something they don't need or not going to use because they're just going to have a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to me and my business. So always look to help first and have the sale come second, and eventually it will come. Trust me. Uh, the last thing is refer if you can't help. I touched on this in the previous point, but if you cannot help in that moment, if you do not have the correct solution or or fix or service or whatever for that person, don't just throw up your hand and say, oh, oh well, we're done. Try to go back in your knowledge and say, you know what, I can help you, but I know someone who may, or I have three options, or I heard of this or that and give them to send them the information if they need to, especially if it's like a local uh, networking partner that you might know or be friendly with. And, you know, for instance, I don't do SEO, but if someone comes to me saying they need SEO, I will direct them to one of my, he's a good friend of mine that does SEO. So it's not for being a friend, he's awesome at what he does, so I direct him. So it makes you look good on two fronts. It makes you look good in his eyes because I'm sending him business makes you look good in that person who asked me because I'm sitting with someone who I trust who's amazing what they do. So all of a sudden on two fronts from my friend, he says, okay, Roger is him a referral. And the next time he has an opportunity to refer someone to me, he'll remember and send it my way. And then the person who I referred, they will sit there because the, the, my friend doesn't do what I do. So they may say, you know what? I have my problem solved now. Now I need what Roger and Beacon Marketing does. And because he was so good to me here, I'll come back and ask them. So just that one simple refer, referral helped me in two ways. Trust me, always being that resource in terms of referring people, I've done it for three plus years now and I've always gotten more back than I've given. It may not happen immediately, but over the long run, it does happen. So always look to refer if you can directly help. And that sort of kind of encapsulates what the whole this whole video is about, being a resource. So let's recap real quickly you know, the ways you can be a resource. First, you want to listen to your audience and to then anticipate their needs. Be ready to engage when they have a question they want to contact you. Uh, always remember sales come second. Answer the, answer the problem, the question, you know, help them with the problem, then worry about the sale. Then lastly, if you cannot directly help with the product or service you provide, try to direct them or refer to somebody that you know that could help or something that you may know that could solve that could potentially solve their issue will make you look better in the long run so that's it for me today with in terms of being a resource let me know what you think let me know if you've done any of these things or if you've uh, benefited from this type of, of service I, I think we all have i know i have personally i on both ends of the spectrum i've done it in terms of being a resource through my marketing efforts that i've actually been helped by people who are uh, sending me in the right direction and always feels good so as always like comment share subscribe 
all that fun stuff uh, in the description below. I will include a link to this week's blog, which uh, actually delves deeper into this idea of being a resource and how you can, uh, what, what, what people really want from you in terms of um, marketing. So that's really, it's going to be a really interesting blog. So I, I will take, check that I'll include a link to that. Um, uh, also, it will be a link to uh, schedule free 30 minute um, discovery session where I help you understand where you're at in your marketing journey and what steps you could take next to advance your business and make the most of what you're doing in terms of uh, promoting your business. Uh, the kicker to that is I only do 10 free sessions a month, so you want to be one of those 10. After that, I charge $97. It's a $97 value, so please make sure you're one of those 10. Lastly, uh, sign up to be on my email newsletter. If you're not on it, I um, offer some great information every couple weeks will help you become a better and more effective marketer of your business. So that's it for me today. I look forward to being back next week, which we'll be talking about being efficient and making the most of your marketing efforts. So uh, that's, uh, I'm looking, really looking forward to that discussion. So that's it for me today. Have a great one. Uh, thanks again.